You got a lot of time to think, to think about the things you did. How could you have done different? I couldn't accept it at the beginning, how precious and important was freedom into I was locked in there. And once I was locked in that cell, I realized that, you know, I gotta make a difference. When I was a young boy, dad always took us to the ocean and told me how to snorkel. And eventually he taught me how to dive. It was a learning experience that I would treasure for the rest of my life until I die, that's all I can say. The most interesting part is the corals. How all these corals will grow one next to each other and how they will battle. You can see the coral scars from fighting each other. Once you see the scars, you see how the corals start to grow upwards to avoid the other coral. And it was an amazing array of color. It's like a rainforest under the sea. And I loved it. And I wanted to be just like my dad. See that building right there? That's the building I first came in. When I first came here in Massachusetts, I was lost. I was like out of my habitat. America promises wealth, opportunity. When I first came to Holyoke, it was very difficult because I didn't find all that stuff. I found a city that was divided. There was a war going on on the streets between gangs and drug dealers and the police and everybody else. And it's very difficult to adapt. I was missing the ocean. I was missing something that was part of me. So I end up doing bad things. We know more about space than we know our own ocean. Can you believe that? <laughs> We're still discovering species every year. There's species, and there's a billion more to be discovered. Coral is actually an animal and a plant together, and there's different species and different kinds. There's a SPS, we call small polypestone corals. It's actually a coral that grows, colonizes. It creates, takes the calcium of the water and creates a skeleton. That's like what we call reef building coral, which is when they die, they become a stone. And then we got what we call the soft corals. Soft corals are like more like a plant, and when they die, they just dissolve. They, they don't build anything. You will find yourself in the bottom. And from the bottom, you're gonna have to rise up and do whatever you can. Music to me is the sounds of the wave breaking in the reef. You know, and the sound of the water when you're diving and you hear all those different sounds, everything under the water is like amplified. That's music, for me, the best music in the world. Being in prison is the worst thing that you could go through, especially when you hear those doors close, boom, and then you see that silence. So you can hear these guys screaming at each other. Papa used to tell me, when the coral reef dies, so would the people die. And then one day, after nine years of being here in Massachusetts, I went to Puerto Rico to visit. I was so excited to get in the water, and the whole reef was dead. Everything was decimated. I couldn't even believe it. I was in shock. I was sad. TVs, it didn't got anywhere. Only the people from the town knew it. And they couldn't do nothing because they didn't know how to protect themselves and fight against some big company like that. What Grandpapa meant was once you start seeing that the coral reef, the coral reef is dead, then it's going to be a matter of time before mankind starts to starve because we depend on the ocean. Why would we depend on the coral reef? That's where most of the fish reproduce. They destroy the whole reef. 
and now the poor people cannot make a living out of that. That prompted into me a desire to learn more about the corals and their habitat and how I could educate myself to maybe do something in the future. When I walk into my garage, it's like entering into the ocean. First thing I can feel is that heat and moisture coming and hitting my face and I can feel it on my skin, I can smell it. So it's like I'm stepping into a whole different dimension. For me, it's, it's music, it's music to my ears. What we're doing there in Marine Reef Habitat is that we take the corals, we separate all the polyps, and then glue them to the tile. And then the coral grows and takes over the tile into a certain size, and then we sell it to the pet stores. I'm here, I didn't know what to do, so I started doing what I love to do. Honestly, that's what saved my life. If now I'll be probably dead, let's put it that way. And at the same time, I use it as a business so I can support my family. You know what the most rewarding um, feeling that I had was when I was to Puerto Rico setting up on the boat, my diving gear. I can see the face and the eyes and the glow in my daughter's eyes, like admiring what I'm doing. Like, she, wow, what was that doing, you know what I mean? That was the coolest thing. And especially, you know what, also? The way that her first time she put her mask, just like I did when I was, you know, five years old, she put her mask and she went on the water. All I could hear is her screams, like, you know, screaming at every fish and everything she saw, every, everything, the environment that I learned to love. I'm sorry, I got choked up a little bit, but, you know, that was the biggest, biggest reward. We trained two kids out of probably about 20 kids that came and they tried, some of them didn't like it, but two kids loved it. One is going this year for marine biology and the other one is working on a pet store in Springfield. If I can teach some kids how to do this, then I'm ensuring the future of the coral reef. I have to keep doing this until I achieve what I want to achieve, which is use the revenues of my company to restore the reef. I take that money, I go to Puerto Rico every year and I invest it into restoring the reef and that is my crusade that I took upon myself. And I hope that one day everybody all over the world would do the same thing. One man cannot change the world, but we all can do a little bit.